Okay, so this is uh, PowerPoint C, and I'll probably divide this up into at least two 30-minute lectures. Uh, so this is histology. Um, so, as you can see, this is something, right? It's hard to tell. We're zoomed so far out, but it's a small intestine, right? Um, it's not that great of a slide, but it, a couple of things are pretty good on it. So this here muscle layer, remember you have, uh, generally have two layers of muscle around the digestive system. Um, this is your epithelial lining on the inside. It happens to be simple columnar, but we're so far away you can't see it. Okay. Stomach, small intestine, large intestines all have simple columnar. This is the lumen. So that's where the food and nutrients would pass and get absorbed by these cells. There's some connective tissue. You just can't see it very well. It's probably some collagen fibers in there. And But this is what I do like about this slide. See this little membrane that got peeled away? That's the visceral peritoneal membrane. It's really only one cell layer deep, maybe a little bit of connective tissue stuff under it. Um, but it's just kind of nice the way it peeled away. Uh, so that's the visceral layer. That's a serous membrane that we were talking about. Uh, peritoneal, uh, remember that's that cavity within the cavity, within the abdominal pelvic cavity. All right. So, uh, let's see if I can get this a little bigger for you. There you go. All righty. So levels of organization, sometimes I put a, multiple choice on that just make sure you pick out from the smallest to the largest right and don't forget an organ can be made up of um several tissues what's our four main tissues epithelial tissue muscle tissue neural or nervous tissue and connective tissue that's our four biggies now there's subdivisions and we'll go into those so here's our four biggies epithelial connective um once you spell it once, you can just abbreviate connectives, CT, everyone does, C period, T period. Muscular tissue, remember you got three different types of muscle. You got smooth, cardiac, and skeletal. We'll go into those a little bit. And then nervous tissue. All right, let's talk a little, well, you know what? Let's do the easiest one first. I'm going to have to scoot to the back of this uh, PowerPoint. Let's do nervous tissue first. And then we'll do muscular tissue. Those are the easiest two. Okay, so I'm going to go all the way to the back. Okay, there's a neuron. So if you see this on a slide or on a um, on a um, laminate or however well, you know however we show it, <laughs> right? A uh, picture. Uh, I go. I, all I can do is put the arrow a couple places and go. What is that? Uh, cell and you would go a neuron the cell body is called a soma s-o-m-a that's just another another word uh this would be the axon which sends information right sends a signal and these are dendrites which receive information okay now at the end of this axon it's going to put out um a chemi chemical messengers known as neurotransmitters don't confuse those with hormones. You know, the endocrine system uses chemical messengers, messengers known as hormones. The uh, neural system uses chemical messengers known as neurotransmitters. There's a nucleus. I'm hardly ever going to point at that. Sometimes you can see a little dot right in the middle of it that's bunched up chromatin. That's called a nucleolus. All right. What are these little bitty dots scattered all around? Whoop. What happened? What are these little bitty dots scattered all around? They're technically, well, they're nuclei in their cell. They belong to cells, but they they didn't stain for the cells. So you can't really see the cells themselves. Um, but those are nuclei to neuroglia. N-E-U-R-O-G-L-I-A. Um, so neuroglia, there's different kinds. We'll learn five or six different kinds. But for now, this is intro. We're not learning individual things like that. Just know that they're, you know, they're basically kind of like supporting cells for the neurons. They do different things. And we'll learn about those on test four. But I could say, what are the small cells scattered all around the big cell? Go neuroglia. If you just say glia, G-L-I-A, I'd probably give it to you too. 
but it'd be better if you said neuroglia. So guess what? We're done with neural. It's not much I can point at, right? Just know that these neurons can be located, you know, brain, spinal cord. Uh, they can they can be outside of um, the brain and the spinal cord also. They can be in other places in the body, but the majority of them um, are mostly in the brain and spinal cord. There's smooth muscle. So remember muscle, and it can be smooth cardiac or skeletal. So this is an example of smooth muscle. So when you look at it, it looks smooth. You don't see a bunch of little stripes in it. The stripes, which would be running like this, this is directions like this, uh, those would be called striations, and I'll show you those on another, uh, either skeletal or cardiac. So skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle are striated. Smooth muscle is not striated, hence the name smooth. Right, and what are those striations? They're just uh, contractile proteins in a certain pattern that gives you that effect. The smooth muscle have contractile proteins, yeah, but they're just not arranged like that, so they don't give you that striped pattern. What is this down here? Well, that's more smooth muscle, but the little spindle shaped cells see these shell cells are kind of shaped like a big long spindle, right? Uh, they're coming at you here because this is two layers of muscle, so this probably intestine, right? Remember those two layers I showed you on the first slide? So this layer here, the cells are coming at you, and here they're cut long ways. So why I like this slide, it just shows you how differently a tissue can look depending on how it's cut. Pretty cool, all right? Don't worry about that, we'll get to that, we'll get to that, we'll get to that, we'll get to that. Let's see if I got another uh, muscle. All right, so here's the artist's conception of smooth muscle. See the spindle-shaped cells that he drew or she drew? Uh, this is a real, uh, you know, uh, microscope slide of them. Um, they stand it kind of weird. It looks kind of purple. They normally stand more pink, but you can't really go by color. It just depends on the stain they use. Uh, here's, let's go up here, skeletal muscle. It's, it's called that because it's generally connected to the skeleton. It, you know, moves the skeleton for the most part. Uh, there's exceptions. Um, let's see the little stripes? Those are striations. Look at the nucleus. You got one there, you got one there, you got one there, you got one there. You go, wait a minute, why we got more than one nucleus per cell? Well, that's a characteristic of skeletal muscle, multinucleated. Because these things are really long. Think how long your biceps here or whatever could be. You know, one cell could be running down the entire length of it. They were originally individual, what they call, uh, you know, muscles. You know, they were young muscle cells. We'll get to that later. Um, but they fused and made one long muscle cell or fiber. Fiber and cells, same thing in this case. Um, and they left their nuclei behind. So that's why you got more than one nucleus, okay? So really easy to tell because usually you can see these striations really well. You can see the nuclei really well. Cardiac muscle, is it striated? Yes. Is it voluntary or involuntary? Well, it's involuntary. You can't control it. Skeletal muscle, for the most part, you can control. It's under your direction. So, <clears throat> so that's voluntary for the most part. Smooth muscle, involuntary also. Smooth muscle singly nucleated, yeah. It's cardiac muscle singly nucleated, yeah. Every now and then, according to my buddies, they'll find two, but we're gonna go by what your book says. Um, uh, singly nucleated, okay? Is cardiac muscle striated? Yes. Is skeletal muscle striated? Yes. What are these things? Really nice. Intercalated disc. Right, so intercalated discs are, um, it's just where, like, that's a cell and that's a cell. And this is joining them together. It's holding these two cells together. They're really, really strong, right? So they're held together by desmosomes. I think we've talked about those. And there's also gap junctions in between there because this cell might need to pass a signal to this cell, you know, by flowing some ions across. So that's, um, that's where you find a lot of gap junctions are in those intercalated discs. So where's a great place to find gap junctions and desmosomes? 
intercalated disc of the cardiac muscle. There are other places too, but that's a great place. Okay, so guess what? Downward muscle. Um, I'll show you some better, you know, some real slides instead of artist drawings, you know, when we get to the review. But um, it it does look pretty much like these. You just don't see the stripes, the little striations on cardiac as, as good in real life. Um, okay, so let's recap. Smooth muscle, singly nucleated, no striations, involuntary. Cardiac muscle. Singly nucleated, striated, involuntary. Plus, you have intercalated disc holding them together. Skeletal muscle, multinucleated, striated, voluntary for the most part. All right, so that was quick. Guess what? We're done with two of the four tissues. I told you these were the easy ones. Uh, let's go to the little more difficult now, going all the way back to the front. Okay, epithelial tissue. So we just did nervous and muscular. Now we're going to delve a little bit into epithelial. So epithelial, all epithelia pretty much has these five characteristics in common. Every now and then there will be like an exception, but don't stress on that. So the five properties of, sounds like an essay question, doesn't it? Five properties of epithelial tissue. Cellularity. Attachment to a basement membrane, polarity, which in this case just means top and bottom. The cells have an orientation. A vascularity in Latin, generally, if you have an A in front of a word, it means without. So a vascular means without blood vessels, and they can regenerate if they get damaged, right? Uh, you know that. Uh, basically, you have stem cells that can that can regenerate. You know epithelial cells. All right, let's take them one at a time. Cellularity, what in the heck does that mean? Basically, one cell is connected to another cell, connected to another cell, connected to another cell. So think of the tiles on the floor. Just act like those are, are uh, simple squamous epithelium. We'll talk about that in a minute. So just say it's one cell deep. The tiles on the floor represent a cell. One tile is Connected to the next tile, connected to the next tile, connected to the next tile. So it forms a sheet, basically. And uh, they can cover things, or they can be inside of things, like a vessel or whatever. Um, so cellularity is just those cells being bound to each other and forming, basically, sheets. What's holding them together? Tight junctions, maybe desmosomes. Um, and that's all we mean by cellularity. So, like we use the example in the lecture of tiles on the floor. So the tiles would be the cells. The glue that holds the tile to the concrete below it would be your basement or basal, uh, uh, base, sorry, basement membrane. So the basal layer, you know, the, the cells that are at the bottom, well, if it's simple, like simple squamous, there's only one cell deep. I mean, it's only one cell deep. But you could have stratified where it's many uh Cell layer, cells deep, and then the bottom layer of cells would be connected to the basement membrane. So that's all we mean by attachment to a basement membrane. And I'll show you on another slide. Polarity, they have a top and a bottom. So if you're walking around on the tiles, you're walking on the apical surfaces. That's the ones either, you know, towards the lumen or away from the basement membrane. Okay? Apicals, the top. Basals, the bottom. As far as the... Uh, as far as the surfaces, okay. So here's here's it's one deep. So that's a simple type of epithelium. It's simple because it's only one cell deep. There's another cell, and look, they're attached to a basement membrane. Okay. So this would be the apical surfaces, right? And this would be the basal surfaces, and they kind of show in two different kinds of things on top. Normally, you don't get this in this way but you could have cilia or microvilli up here don't stress on that right now so let's just look over here simple columnar epithelium so and then look at the way they're held together right whoop so you got attachments holding them together um so they're forming like a 
basically a sheep, right? So when you're naming epithelia, you got to give me three names to get the whole credit. This is simple. That's how many cells deep it is. It's columnar. That's how it's shaped. And then you got to say the word epithelium to let me know what tissue you're talking about. So simple columnar epithelium. Where's a good place to find simple columnar epithelium? Well, it's in a few places, but um, the stomach's a good place. The small intestine's a good place. And the large intestine's a good place. Okay. Avascular. Notice you didn't see any blood vessels in any of that. So the epithelia, for the most part, um, lack blood vessels. If the blood vessels are up above the basement membrane, generally something's wrong. Okay. If they get damaged, can you regrow? Um, are there stem cells? Yeah. And stem cell, and this is just a little by note here, stem cell research trying to discover how to regenerate cardiac and neural cells. Because back in my day, they said, oh, cardiac cells don't divide. Neural cells don't divide. And then later on, you know, this is the way science is always, always kind of backing up and changing things. You go, well, that may not be completely true. <laughs> so anyway, um, they may be able to stimulate some stem type cells and regrow you some new cardiac muscle and regrow you some new, new neural cells, which will be really good, you know, for people that have, you know, problems in that area. So simple, this is the way I was telling you how you name things. Simple just means it's one layer of cells deep. Stratified, anything more than one. Even if it's only two cells deep, you call it stratified. So what in the heck is pseudo-stratified? Well, it looks like it's more than one deep, but it's really not. It's only one deep. It's just, just kind of like an optical illusion. Okay. And I'll show you a good place to find that. Here's stratified, right? It's many cells deep, okay? What's it shaped like? And you go, well, I can't really tell. So, so let's look at the artist's drawing. Don't go by the bottom down here where they're all nice and plump and fresh. You know, these guys are newer, right? Go to the top and look, and you see the way they're getting skinny, and they look almost like little fried eggs. Like, like from the top, it looks like that, but don't pay, that's a simple, so don't worry about that. So the stratified, if you just look at it from the top and look at the cross section here, they're real skinny. And you go, oh, those are squamous cells. Is it more than one layer deep? Yeah. So it's stratified, squamous, epithelium. Where's a good place to find this? Well, this is probably the esophagus, right? Whoop. Uh-oh. Where's my pointer? Here we go. But this probably so the food the lumen would be this way and the food would be going like that <laughs> so um the esophagus is stratified squamous epithelium because anytime you have it real thick like that it's um it's for protection okay now what about the skin on your arm is that stratified squamous well yes it is but it doesn't quite look like this because you've got hair growing through it and the cells have a protein called keratin. Keratin also makes up hair, by the way. And that just gives you even more protection. Now, inside your cheeks, inside your esophagus, uh, no, there's no keratin, right? And so it's tough, but it's not as tough, right? So they're both for protection. And so if you were going to name this, you go, uh, stratified squamous epithelium. That's all you would have to say. If it was on the arm, it had or scalp, and it had hair growing through it, you'd go stratified squamous epithelium. And then in parentheses, just to kind of make sure I know you know what you're talking about, put keratinized. See the way they put non-keratinized here. Okay. Uh, simple. So you notice the simple is just one layer deep. It's attached to a basement membrane, simple squamous. Let's think about where you can find simple squamous epithelium. What about inside of a blood vessel? Yeah, simple squamous. What about inside your little alveolar sacs in your lungs? Yeah, that's a good place too. So I want you to think about where these things are found because sometimes I ask a question, where can you find it? What is that? And you go, simple squamous epithelium. Where's a good place to find it? You can go lungs, right? Or you could go inside of blood vessels. There's other places like 
places in the kidney and some other places you can find it. Um, but um, yeah, just give me a correct answer and you get the you get the point. This is pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium. That's a long name. You only have to spell it out once on your test, the first test, and then the rest of the semester, if you have any questions, you can just go P S C C. But you gotta spell it out once so that I know that you know what the heck it stands for. Okay? Where's a good place to find this? Well, some few places, but the trachea. Somebody hands you a slide, it's probably a trachea. Inside your trachea, you have PSCC, and those cilia sweep out dust and pollen and all that stuff. They sweep it up so that you can either spit it out, swallow it down, whatever. Okay? Now, look at the basement membrane here. Nice little basement membrane. Okay? But you go, whoa, that looks like it's more than one deep. Look at all these nuclei. Nope, it's an optical illusion. So, this cell, that's, it belong, this belongs to a cell, that belongs to a cell, but you just can't see them because they're kind of jumbled up. So this one might be behind there or in front of there, and you're not seeing it, but each and every cell is touching the basement membrane. Okay, so that's why it gives you that weird effect, and it's called pseudostratified, ciliated columnar. Okay, now, cell shape, we just talked about squamous and columnar, and the other one that looks like a little cube, cuboidal. So they're squamous, right? Oh, by the way, if you're looking at simple squamous from the top or stratified squamous from the top, they look the same because you can't see down through it. So I will never show you stratified squamous from the top. If you're seeing this looks like the tiles on the floor, just call it simple squamous epithelium. This is a weird, you know, I don't know why we put this golden one up here. It normally stains purple like this. Um, and you can see nuclei in there, right? Um, but if you see that effect, just call it simple squamous epithelium, okay? Um, now let's go on to cuboidal. Cuboidal, right? Cuboidal looks like a cube. And you can see them. Even on a real one, they look kind of cuby. So the nucleus pretty much smack dab in the middle of the cell. Right? See them? They're not columns. They're not fried egg looking squamous cells. Right? So this is in the kidney. And it's, you know, remember those nephrons? You got all kind of ducks that are curled all up like a garden hose. You know, they're all curled around, kind of like it's hard to see, but like that. Um, this could be the same part of a nephron is this they're just curled up this part's coming at you and this part's cut crossways right longitudinally rather sorry um so this is the basement membrane see it it's really nice these are the apical surfaces where in a circle where it's coming at you this whoop, this these are the apical surfaces this would be the basement membrane. It's kind of hard to see, but you can kind of see it. Outside of that, right in there, that's just uh, connective tissue, probably. <laughs> They're not really showing it here. <laughs> um, so, anyway, uh, mammary glands take on this effect, whatever. So, if you see something that looks like a duct and it's coming at you, I'm just showing you a simple cuboid. Probably. Now, we do have some good slides where it's simple columnar in a duct, you know, coming at you or cut long ways. It's really evident if I use those. So you'll 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 be able to tell simple cuboidal from simple columnar apart. Um, I would never do this one to you. Look at that. Looks almost the same. That's stratified cuboidal epithelium. It's not even fair to you guys because it's usually only two deep. Maybe three, but it, it, it almost gives you the exact same. But look at this guy. That looks almost the same as that. So it's not fair to you guys. Um, so if you see a duct cut like this and it looks like little cubes, simple cuboidal. Don't say stratified cuboidal. Okay? Um, simple columnar. I generally try to find you a good cut like this. And they look like long columns. And why this happens, I don't know, but the nuclei tend to be closer to the basement membrane in a good cut. Not always, right? 
So I'll try to find you a really good cut that looks kind of like this. And here's your nice basement membrane. There's your connective tissue. Your blood vessels would be down there, by the way. This is the apical surfaces. And guess what? This is in an intestine. So no, there's not cilia, but there's microvilli. So microvilli, remember, they're tiny, tiny, tiny. Okay? And they're for absorption. You can't even see individual microvilli because they're so tiny. So, so sometimes they call this a brush border because it's so thick it looks like a hairbrush. So anyway, we'll worry about that a little bit later. All right. So these are just some of the stuff we just talked about. Simple squamous versus simple cuboidal versus stratified cuboidal. Right. So remember, give me the, they left out the word epithelium on the end. So when you name one, go simple squamous epithelium, simple cuboidal epithelium. I wouldn't give you stratified, but you would name it stratified cuboidal epithelium. If it was PSCC, you'd go pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium. I know that's a lot, <laughs> right? But uh, yeah, you just got to learn it. It's not that hard. Okay. So glands are made of epithelium are they derived from epithelia and we're going to cut this off here because we're getting close to 30 minutes and then the next one um we will go into glands and then we will you know it's not a whole lot on that and then we will do connective tissue Alrighty. so anyway that's uh the first lecture of powerpoint c okie dokie